with the language acquisition uh, division as well. I'm really happy to be here. Hi, my name is Nikki Ugel and I work closely with Debbie and Widad and I am the middle school manager for language acquisition with DC Public Schools. Okay, so we want to begin by first sharing with you um, this core belief that we have and truth that we know is that multilingualism is a superpower. So we want you to know that although today's session will primarily focus on English language development, we want you to know that continued engagement and development in your student's first language is a priority. And that strong native skills will help your child develop their new language, English. So it will not impede their development. It will not slow their development of English. The more literacy skills they have in their first language, the more language skills, the more vocabulary, those skills transfer to English and will help them learn English more easily. So we just want you to know to start, we'll be talking about learning English and the best ways to do that, but also know that by um, learning your own language and speaking your own language with your students, you are helping them not only with their own, your own language, but also to learn English. And we want to start today making sure that you understand your child's score on the Access for ELLs. And that is an exam that we give every year to find out our students' English language proficiency level. That test begins in kindergarten and your child will take it every year until they reach level five. So you can see on the screen here, we start with level one, which is entering. So that's what your student may, or some students may have um, very beginning English skills. They're just beginning to learn English. And so we just want to know where they are and we want to measure their progress because what we really want to see is that they move up to level five where they're really ready to um, learn in school fully in English without any other supports other than using their English skills to guide them. So our levels are entering and number two is beginning. Those two levels um, compromise from the beginning level of English. So students still have a lot to learn. They still need a lot of support. Then we move into levels three and four, so developing and expanding. And normally we would think of that as our intermediate levels of English, where students can say a lot, they can do a lot, but they haven't reached a level of academic language proficiency. And then at level five, now um, our students are beginning to write, speak, read, just as their native language peers are reading. So just so you know that that's the progression of language development and how we look at that development. All right, so we can go to the next slide. Okay, so sometime in August, you will, if you have a student who's learning English, you will receive um, your child's score, a parent report. So we want to make sure that when you receive this, that you'll have a good understanding of what you're looking at. So um, there are four domains that we look at, and that's just another word for the four basic skills in English. So listening, reading, writing, and speaking. We also view your scores in different ways to kind of give us an understanding of your child's skill. And so here on the left of the screen at the bottom, we look at oral language. So we really wanna know how they're um, listening and how they're speaking. And some students excel in that area. Some students need extra support. So we will look at that as a score. We'll look at literacy. So that score is gonna be their reading and writing skills. So we know how they're doing in those skill areas. Then we'll look at a comprehension score. And so that's gonna be listening and reading. So how they understand the English that they're presented with. And then finally, the big score that many of your teachers are gonna talk about is their overall composite score. So that's gonna give us their main level. And we often use that to identify students as language learners and to plan the supports that we're gonna to provide to your students. So that becomes a very important score to know that overall language score. 
So just so you know, that's kind of the big picture. And now we can look in detail at the document that you will receive. So we can go to the next slide. Okay, so um, you can see at the top, it'll have the four domains and it's gonna give you a proficiency level. So for our report that's in English, on the left, you can see the child has a score of one in listening, 1.2 in speaking, one in reading, and 3.0 in writing. So for this student, we know the child has very strong writing skills, but their other skill areas are low according to the exam. So you will also be given scaled scores and that helps us measure the student's growth over time. The real score that as a parent, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is the proficiency level score, that score in the middle. Um, again, you can see on the Spanish side uh, for escuchar, it's 4.0. So that child, it's a very high level of comprehension, listening comprehension, but their speaking is a level 2.2. So they're still more at that beginner stage. In reading, they're 3.4 and in writing a 3.5. So again, a very intermediate level, but we know their listening is the strongest. So again, for teachers, this will help us. This will also help you at home to know which area of your child has their strength. So you can use it as you're helping your child. And then you will know which areas that they need to grow and you can help them as they're growing their English skills. And then at the bottom of our score sheets, then you see those um, composite scores that are telling you about their oral language, their literacy, their comprehension, and finally the overall score. So again, just to give you an understanding of what you're looking at when you do receive the score report, generally your school will mail this out to you or send it home with your student at the beginning of the school year. If you are very curious, um, at the end of the school year this year, you can reach out to your principal to see if they've received the scores and if they could send you the score in advance if you don't want to wait till August. Let's go to the next slide and look at the other information you will receive on the score sheet. At the bottom of the score sheet, it does give you more information about the different levels. And so again, I've explained them to you, but this gives you um, three or four key points so that you understand what does that mean if you know your child has a proficiency at level one. So that again, this will help you understand the skills that your child has at each level. So if you have questions though about the next level up, you would wanna reach out to your child's ESL teacher or the principal of your school to get more information, but this will give you a very good idea of where your child is in terms of their current English language proficiency. Okay, and I think we can go to the next slide and have some time for questions. Thank you so much for that information. Um, we have a few other folks who have joined. Um, if you need interpretation services, please let us know in the chat or you can unmute yourself and I'll make that announcement in Spanish. Gracias a las personas que están en la sesión ahora. Si usted necesita interpretación en español y no la puedo accesar, puede poner en el chat para que le ayudemos o puede salirse de mute um, y decirnos ahora y así podemos continuar. Um, as folks are thinking about the questions they want to ask, I'm going to put a poll on the screen. Um, and that's to tell us where you live so we know who is in the room. And then also the level of school your child is in. So as we go through the next slides, talk about strategies, we know which grade level to emphasize. So I'm launching that now. Um, while our participants are answering the poll, there is a question um, that we have here. And just going back to the, um, let me go back to this right here. What influences a child having different scores? So if this were my child, why are they so proficient at listening and not so much at speaking? 
That's a really good question. And there are many factors that influence your child's score. Um, the score you see here in Spanish is not uncommon. Often our students spend a lot of time listening at school. As you can imagine, they listen to the teacher, they listen to their classmates, they have to follow directions. So often our students will have a very high listening skill and lower in the other domains. So that's very typical. Often our skills in reading and writing are affected on our skills in reading and writing in our first language. So if your child is reading and writing in your home language, it's very likely as they begin to learn English, they're gonna progress more quickly because they're gonna build on those skills. Now, if they've had some interrupted schooling or they weren't able to start school, that's okay because when they come here, we are going to work on teaching them to read and write in English, but sometimes those skills will take longer to develop, especially to reach a higher level of academic proficiency. I'm going to speak to speaking. Um, here, you can see this in the, again, the Spanish score of 2.2. The way this test works for grades um, first through 12, the students are talking to the computer and they're using a microphone. They're given a prompt that they hear from the screen. They're not talking with the person. So some for some students, that's not a very natural way to talk. And they're told to speak and then they're just speaking into the microphone. They're not getting any feedback on what they're saying. No one's asking them questions or to ask them to tell me more. So sometimes students have a lower score in speaking. And sometimes that's not, um, because of the way the test is set up, it may not be reflective of their true skills in speaking. So that's a really good question to ask if your child has a lower speaking score and it doesn't match all the other skills that they have. So that it may just be a function that when the test took place, the child didn't say much, they kept going and it's not a true reflection of their score. So I just want to make that clear. That's a very good question. Thank you. Are there any other questions for people in the call? All right, let's continue on. Great, thank you, Debbie, for walking us through the access scores and the student reports that parents will receive. Um, we really wanted to, before we jump into what are some ways as parents, as family members, that we can support our children at home with improving their English language development, we really wanted to just highlight that everything that we do, everything that we work on with improving language development is either to launch an interpretive communication or expressive communication. What do we understand, right, versus what are we creating? And when I speak about the strategies moving forward, you will notice that there are some strategies that may overlap um, because they can all benefit each other. So you'll see that strategies with that help improve listening and reading um, may seem similar because they are both ways that help us understand things. Uh, whereas strategies with speaking and writing may seem very similar as well because those are ways where we express ourselves and we are trying to communicate with other people. Um, so that just wanted to come to put that out there that when we talk about language development, we're really talking about two modes of communication and that's interpretive and expressive. Um, so let's start with some strategies. Uh, we'll start first with the next slide would be about ways to improve uh, speaking uh, with your child. And all of these strategies are for students at every grade level. So when we talk about different kinds of strategies. Each of these strategies can be modified for your child based off of their grade level. So we first start with family conversations. This is probably one of the simplest but most important ways to strengthen your child's speaking skills. Uh, talk with your child every day. And if you feel more comfortable speaking in your native language, then do so in your first language, in your native language. If a child is accustomed to having conversations on a daily basis, whether it's in their first language or in their new language, they are learning skills and ways to express themselves 
um, by also hearing you speak back to them. Um, so speak with them every single day, talk about school, talk about life at home. What did they do with their friends at the park? Um, use new and interesting words, maybe challenge uh, yourself and your family to have a new word for the day. And that's the word you wanna see how many times you're gonna use it that day, right? Uh, find a new vocabulary word. Again, it can be in your native language or in English. Um, and then remind your child of those words. So as you have these family conversations on a day-to-day -day basis, um, remind them of the words that you've learned in the past and try to incorporate them more as you move forward um, across the days. Um, a second way to help improve amongst family conversations is stories on the go. Um, when you're in the car, when you're on a walk in the neighborhood, uh, when you're sitting down on the couch and maybe start a story, take turns um, creating a story with your family and you start that story, you invent the first sentence. Once upon a time, Marcus went to the woods and then your child says the second sentence. He saw a big orange monkey. Have fun, create that story together um, and help develop the, you know, that sense of creativity and, and grow their imagination while also practicing uh, their speaking skills. In addition to family conversations, when you are on the go, when you're at the mall or the grocery store, or you are walking down the streets in the neighborhoods, there is a lot of ways where your child can be exposed to different ways of communicating with people. So asking for help at the grocery store or asking for help at the, at the, at the mall or for a size, right? Going to the cashier and asking them if they have any more of the products in stock. Encourage your child to, you know, to not be shy and to really push the boundaries and be more comfortable speaking with strangers in a professional setting, right? Like I'm gonna go speak with the cashier at the, at the register to ask for help, even though they're not someone I speak to every single day. Uh, I'm going to make a phone call to the customer service representative for a cell phone bill. Um, I'm thinking about high school kids, right? Um, and, talk, and ask them if we can add an additional line to our cell phone plan. Um, think about different ways in the real world where we can encourage, especially our middle schoolers and our high schoolers um, to start having more professional day-to-day um, -day conversations. Um, and then singing, you know, have fun. It doesn't always have to feel like a challenge. Is there a song you and your child really love to sing? Sing along to that song in the car. Um, one of the things that we used to love doing during our lunch times at our high school at Cardozo was doing karaoke with our students. We chose a song that everybody loved. We put the lyrics on the, on, the, on the screen or on the TV and everybody would sing along to the song. Not only did this help with practicing pronunciation and hearing themselves in a new language, it also helped with reading. Um, so as I mentioned before, sometimes strategies in different areas might be seen or overlapping um, with skill, skill development. Next, um, we wanna talk about, so speaking naturally, when someone is speaking, we are listening. Um, so when I'm speaking to my child, how do I make them listen to me? Um, good question, but let's talk about how can I improve my child's listening um, in a more academic setting. Um, when a child is in school, as Debbie had mentioned before, they are listening a lot to what their teachers are saying, and that is one way, one of the strongest ways to develop a new language. Um, but this is something that can continue even outside of the uh, outside of school, and it doesn't have to look like school. Um, the first one is radios, podcasts, or audiobooks. Um, when you're in the car, you could choose an audiobook or a podcast or a radio station and listen to it in English listen to the stories and then have a conversation. What did you hear? What was the conversation about? How did you feel about what you heard? How did they feel about what they heard? Um, did you hear a new word that you're interested in looking up? Did they hear a new word? Um, that's a great way to really push that language development. Um, another way when you're at home um, is movies. Movies are always a great way and we can and these movies are something we can do with our families and we can do it no matter what the age is. I know I love watching animated movies and I'm 32 years old and that's something that I can watch with my nephew who is six years old and he's also learning English right so watch movies together 
um, you can listen, you can watch the movies in your native language. It will help develop strength, strengthening language development, but also challenge yourselves, challenge them to listen to it in English and then have a conversation afterwards in your native language. What happened in the movie? Right. What did you hear? What what were the, the, the parts that excited you and the parts that were confusing to you? Have that conversation after the movie um, to really uh, understand what they understood. Um, and then also, if you want to do you want to double dip and you want to improve both listening and reading, try watching an English movie with English subtitles. Um, this will also help make sure that what you're hearing is what is actually being said, because sometimes we may hear a word and it might look different than what we heard. And so sometimes seeing the word and hearing the word at the same time helps us also strengthen our reading skills and our pronunciation skills um, with language development. Um, and then read aloud. As the parents, make, spend some time with your child reading your favorite story. Or if you don't wanna read a story, if you have a favorite oral story, or that your family has passed down for generations, or you know something happened during the day, spend some time in the day where you're sharing a story with your child, um, both in English or in your native language, and just have them listen um, to the story and check their understanding again by asking them, what did you hear? What did you understand? And then um, reading. And we just talked about reading out loud, but there's also different ways where your child can read and they can push their reading skills. And there's ways to do that where it's not just sitting down at home with a book. Um, we are lucky to live in the nation's capital that has so much history and there's so many things across the city um, that we can use to help develop those reading skills. Uh, one of my favorite things is the DC neighborhood heritage trails. Um, if you each trail in DC is about one to two miles, you can go get your steps in, get your exercise for the day, one to two mile trek in the city, but there are large posters um, across that trail. And each of those posters will have pictures, they'll have maps, and they'll have some short um, history about that part of Washington, DC. Um, so it's a great way to encourage um, students' reading skills but also a great way to learn more about Washington, D.C. and the history of Washington, D.C. And again, like I said, get your exercise and get some fresh air. In addition, um, after your one and a half mile walk, maybe you're going to go to a restaurant and get a, a nice lunch. When you're at lunch, call attention to prints, right? Look at the restaurant. There's menus. Outside of the restaurant, there's parking signs. There are posters that are hanging up announcing events in the city. And there are ads talking about sales that are coming up. Point those out to your child. Ask them to read it. Ask them to sound those words out. If you're working with primary elementary school students, have them practice their, sound, their sounding out skills and, and their pronunciation while they're reading. If you have high school and middle school kids, have them work on really reading with that fluency, but also understanding, right? Explaining to you, hey, mom, here's what this sign actually says. Hey, dad, let me translate this sign. And that way they're working on their multilingualism and their superpower. Um, and then just like we spoke about before with the reading aloud, have story time at home. Maybe it's 20 minutes a day, maybe it's two times a week where you have a special dedicated time for story time. Have your child read silently for 20 minutes, have them read to a sibling or maybe have them read to you and then spend some time afterwards discussing what they read. But to make this fun, really make it special. Uh, bring them to the library or have a special dedicated spot at home that's for reading. Uh, give them, when a birthday happens or a holiday happens, give them a gift of a book. Make reading a special moment and a special activity so that they look forward to that um, and they continue practicing those skills. Um, another, just with story times, a lot of times that can happen is we take, I've taken students to the zoo and we have gone to the zoo and every student was tasked with an opportunity to go to the zoo, 
choose an animal, watch that animal. And then we came back at lunch and we all told a story about what we saw the animals doing. So sometimes story time doesn't have to be actually reading a book, but it can be just telling that story, but they would have to read information about that animal at the museum or at the zoo um, and listen and watch what's happening and then come back and tell that story. Um, so keep story time as a special time um, for you and your children. And then last but not least, uh, we want to talk about how can you improve their writing skills. Um, so for writing, this is probably one of the areas where we may feel like, oh, my child's not going to want to do this. They're not going to want to just sit down and write. They're on summer vacation. They're not in school. They don't want to be tasked. Writing is something that we do every day. We are texting. We are emailing, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. There's multiple ways that we are writing. Um, so we want to encourage students to improve their writing so that they can do so effectively through all outlets um, in which they are writing. So start with an everyday, ta everyday tasks. Maybe your child is going to help you write the grocery list. Have them write the to-do list for today. Um, maybe your child is going to sit there and they're gonna have to write down their own um, routine for the week. What are their plans for this week? So that you know, right? If you have a, a high schooler or a middle schooler and they have their own friends and they make their own plans, tell them, okay, that's fine. Can you write me a list of the events you're doing this week? Have them practice writing that. So just everyday basic tasks, um, letters, emails, postcards. Have students write letters to their families back home or to their friends from school and mail it out to their friends or deliver it to them. Um, for our early childhood education kids, for our elementary kids, writing sometimes can be just drawing a picture, right? Have them draw, spend that time working with a pen and a pencil and a piece of paper. Um, have them create birthday messages and birthday cards for special occasions. Um, for our upperclassmen, have them write emails, right? Maybe they want to send an email to their upcoming, their new teachers next year, or they, they found a really interesting article online, and so they want to write an email to the publisher, right? Have your child challenge themselves and write those emails. Um, and then make writing fun. Just like we said with reading, make it special. Make writing fun. Have a small box create a box that has writing and drawing materials that, that they look forward to using, that has special paper, um, that those pens and those markers are only used for writing. And so your child is more excited for that time of the day where they get to write. Um, and then dedicate some time, some daily time for writing. So small tasks like writing a grocery list or maybe larger tasks like writing a letter or creating a birthday card, but dedicate some daily time to incorporate writing. And that daily time doesn't have to be an hour. It can be five to 10 minutes, um, but just creating that habit um, daily for writing is great um, for your child. And then I just wanted to remind everybody, um, you wanna do this every day, sing, talk, um, and read with your child every day. Uh, Demel, if we can go to the next slide. Um, your children learn by listening, by talking, by watching you. We know this. We can say so many things to our children and they may not always listen to the things we tell them to do, but they see the things we do and they, they tend to pick up a lot of those habits. So they will be listening and they like to be speaking with you. They're going to learn from us from that way, from their family, from their community members, from their friends. And if you feel more comfortable doing this in your home language, that's okay, sing, talk, and read in that language. Um, that's also gonna help strengthen your child's speaking skills. Uh, but you don't have to do this alone. Um, I just shared some really cool, easy tips that you can incorporate with your child at home, but there are also really cool resources that you can use um, to help with that development. And so I'll pass the mic on to uh, Ms. Nikki Udell so she can tell you guys about some really cool resources. Thank you so much, Widad. Hi, okay, great. So we're gonna close the presentation talking about some resources and some summer opportunities. And then of course, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or you can ask the questions and we'd be happy to help you. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so Brain Pop is a educational platform that we use in school to either teach English or teach Spanish. There's a French version that teaches French. We have a Espen, excuse me, we have a L version, a Brain Pop L that's specifically to teach English to English learners. We also, as I said, have brain pop, which is just to accelerate the English language with vocabulary and comprehension and all types of development for all kids who go to DC public schools. Brain pop is also something that every student has access to. So again, if we're talking about younger kids, middle school kids, elementary kids, even high school kids could access the platform, although they may not want need to. There might be a platform that would be better for them. But the point is, is that every student has access to this platform and there's all types of activities that can be used to learn content and language. And this could be academic, there's math and there's social studies, but there's all types of other activities that we call SEL or social emotional learning. And a social emotional learning is still a wonderful learning opportunity that's infused with language opportunities, but it might be about healthy eating habits or the reason why when you exercise, you might feel like you're in a better mood. It might teach a word such as endorphins. So we want to encourage you, if you were looking looking for some type of a experience on the internet that wasn't necessarily all games, but also had some intentional vocabulary and learning, then we wanted to invite you to use Brain Pop. And this is an application that all of your students, your children, our students and your children can access through their tablet or their phone through Clever. And if there's any issue with access, then any of us will help you, um, anyone at your school, but your, your child will know how to access Clever for all of their educational opportunities that are internet-based. And so we just wanted to invite you to use Clever and brain pop at home as a learning opportunity. And again, remind you that it only has to be so educational in terms of math and science. It is also, I sorry, it is also an opportunity just to learn about other things that are fun ways to infuse language and content together. Debbie Matt at the beginning of the presentation was honoring our students' home language. We have many students who are learning English, but choose to be on Brain Pop Espanol to enhance their home language. And so if that's another opportunity within that Brain Pop menu that I told you about, if your student wanted to play with an educational software in Spanish, we absolutely support that. Okay, next slide, please. The other resource that we really wanted to highlight is the DC Public Library and the opportunities that are available to every DC Public Library card holder. And there's plenty of them. But first and foremost, at the middle school level and the upper elementary school level, the library is often a very safe place to do homework, to be surrounded by books that are multicultural. Typically, if there's a holiday or a celebration, books are highlighted. Oftentimes, we're very intentional about illustrating the books that we have that honor other languages, cultures, um, we wanted to also tell you that with the library card, those books can be checked out and brought home. Sometimes it's just enjoyable to have a book on the table. It's a good habit to teach our children, but also sometimes the books are related to schoolwork. And so we would encourage that. We have students who have picked up a book at the library in their native language, and it's a book that's being taught in English. 
English and they're using that to help them understand the language and the content while building their home language skills. We think that's a beautiful partnership. And so we're very proud of the DC Public Library's vast um, collections in other languages of movies and books and all types of magazines, newspapers from other countries. So we really wanted to encourage that library card, both as a place to be and hang out either with or without your children. And also that that card gives you a lot of opportunities, including something we're gonna talk about on the next slide. Next slide, please. So one of my favorite resources that I use all the time, I used three of my Canopy um, movies this, this weekend. Canopy is a database full of movies and it's similar to Netflix, but I would say it's Netflix times seven in terms of the amount of movies that are available. And you can have access to Canopy through your library card. So universities have access to Canopy and so do library systems. And with, that, with your library card, with Canopy, you get 10 movies a month. There's ways actually, like if you have a, you know, if you have a library card and your child has a library card, then you could potentially have 20 movies a month. And I know that some people do that. I tend to be fine with just the 10, but what I like so much about Canopy is things are categorized. So if you're looking for movies that might speak to women's rights, there's going to be a lot of movies to choose from, maybe 30, maybe 300. And then you can also narrow down and you can find women's rights in Spanish, um, movies that are by a director who speaks Spanish. So of course, this could be someone from Spain in Europe. This could be someone from Central or Latin America. I don't think you can, uh, I don't think you can narrow down further, but there are plenty of movies um, that are sometimes classic Academy Awards. You know, sometimes when you watch the Academy Awards, there are foreign films that you haven't heard of, but you think I'd like to see them or else short movies. There's a whole section in the Academy Award of short movies. They're all on canopy, things that were nominated, things that won, other countries, other cultures, cartoons. It is basically like the library of movies and I enjoy it so much that I always talk about Canopy as something that is a wonderful gift from the library that I um, enjoy so much. So I hope that you also will take advantage of a Canopy card. Next slide, please. And then also just, you know, games that we play involve language and voice and laughter. And so if there's games at your house, a deck of cards, um, in fact, there's a family that um, from Puerto Rico, I, they, they, they're always playing dominoes in the front yard here um, in DC, they're a DCPS family. If there's a game from your culture that would bring you together as a family, having fun, that is also part of what our wish is for you is to spend time together with your children. And also knowing that these games are illustrating language and turn-taking and all other types of things that um, we encourage, joy, and um, family involvement and for language to be used a, and, and being very productive both at home and at school. If you were ever interested in any educational games that um, we use, this is a, a small example, headbands. We also, the, and the, uh, the kids have a great time playing Uno, again, depending upon their age, um, but even just language learners, who are, as Debbie was explaining, they're closer to proficiency level. We still let them play Uno in school sometimes because it's just um, nice, fun, and turn-taking and company-keeping among the, the students, your children, and their friends. Next slide, please. And then lastly, we have, um, for the past seven or eight years, there is a DC.
summer school experience for all children, elementary, middle, and high school students that emphasizes academics while infused with English language learning and opportunities to build community. Each program is different. And so we have an elementary program that, um, again, as you see on the flyer, it's for the little ones pre-K to fourth grade. They also have a tutoring program for that particular age, that group as part of that LSAP, English Language Summer Academic Program Opportunity. The middle school level is a five-week program this year. As the flyer indicates, and we can, of course, get the flyers to you and anyone that you think would be interested in any language of your choice. And it will tell you the differences in the programs in terms of locations. The locations are all at DCPS schools. The elementary program will be housed at different elementary locations. The middle school program is housed at different middle schools across DC. And then the high school program, of course, is also a credit bearing program that infuses content and language to help our L's develop their English skills. And all of these programs at all of these levels, the elementary, the middle and the high school, or of course, to make it so that in the fall when the kids, your our students, your children go back to school, they are have more command of the language and are ready to thrive even more. So um, with that, I wanted to see if there was anything in the chat that I will let our hostess lead and um, answer questions and help in any way possible. I can also tell you that there is another workshop coming up and this is going to be on the 26th at 6.30. And this will be um, both for, in terms of language, there'll be Amharic and Spanish offered. So please um, invite your friends or um, if you wanted to make sure that we had this announcement at, at certain schools, of course, we're looking to um, partner with as many families as possible. And so please join us and um, feel free to, to ask questions about how we could help market this. But this particular workshop is going to focus on that transition from elementary school to middle school. So when our little people turn into big people and we have some wonderful research-based examples and we would love and honor your presence at that workshop. So um, I believe now we can answer some questions in the chat. And then of course, any other questions that any parents had um, we are happy, happy to answer and help in any way. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for sharing about this opportunity at the Welcome Center or hosted by the Welcome Center. Um, it's so important to have that handoff from elementary to middle school. So this is great. Um, so let's take a couple of questions. Um, our folks who are live with us, uh, you can unmute yourself to ask your question or you can enter it in the chat. Um, but while you think about your question, um, there is um, a question that uh, came in. Um, the question is, what if my child doesn't want to learn English? So this might be like an older student who might be having you know, some um, challenges adjusting to a new environment. So what if my child doesn't want to um, learn English? What do I do as a parent? So I'm happy to try. Um, I think anything that's hard and new can be challenging, but I think that um, the way we started this presentation, just speaking about the gift of bilingualism and what being bilingual will do. So my advice is this, student is in a situation where English will benefit them and they will have a 
better chance of success if they're bilingual, um, I would reach out to the teacher and the school to see what we can do to overcome some of those challenges and see if possibly we could make English learning look even like not something that was bad and that's something that was good. So I think, you know, maybe there'd been, you know, some failures or, or, or like not a teacher student connection, but we want to change that and would do whatever we needed to do mm -hmm. to try to make that, um, that feeling that the student had a little bit more positive about learning English. And I also think that we can name that that's probably like a very honest, um, that's a, like, I appreciate the, the hard question. And I think that probably that student is not alone, but it's just something that, that we don't always talk about. And I think, again, without knowing what the story is, but, you know, when you have to learn something new and it's difficult and maybe you don't have some of the resources or help or um, access that you had in your first language, that some of those obstacles can, can make it difficult. And we know that there's a lot of obstacles that come with um, moving to another country, making friends, understanding the custom, understanding the language, understanding the intricacies of the language, understanding the school, the friends, the different types of people at that school. I would just say that the youngster's not alone and we need to, like, we can help. So lean into the school and tell them what's going on and they will be able to offer some opportunities where, um, he's, th this child's not the first who has felt this way. And maybe it's just a little tutoring. Maybe it's an after school club. Maybe it's a buddy. Maybe it's a homework helper. Maybe it's some more structured intervention so that the language acquisition is slightly faster. But um, in order to be successful, we want to emphasize the literacy skills in both the home language and in English. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I want to go back to this slide. What does the usual day for this program looks like? Um, I can speak a little bit to the high school program, and then I can, Debbie and, and Nikki can jump in about elementary and middle school. Um, the high school program runs about two and a half, approximately two and a half hours. Um, and students can take up to two courses. Um, and those courses are usually either original credit to help them um, gain credits to graduate on time, or if students are coming um, or newly arrived um, from, from their home countries, it can help them catch up so that they can graduate faster. Um, it also provides students with opportunities to do credit recovery. So if they did not uh, pass a class, they can take a course again over the summer and earn that credit so that they're not held back in the next academic year. Um, I also want to kind of highlight that for the middle school and the high school, and then I'll pass it on to Nikki to talk about the day-to-day -day in the middle school, um, students can, um, if they complete the five weeks, um, they can earn or qualify for a summer student stipend, a learn and earn stipend. Um, and they can learn more about that from their school counselors and their teachers, uh, but that is an extra bonus for our middle schoolers and our high schoolers um, that not only will they earn these credits for their, their graduation requirements, but they can also earn some extra money this summer as well. So the middle school program is in the middle. It's a combination between trying to understand the high school expectations and how difficult it can be sometimes to be in a high school situation and on your way to being bilingual and celebrating that it's summer and we're not quite big kids yet. And so we have a really nice combination of a language intense academic program that's infused with a lot of opportunities for play where we 
take a bus together or the metro downtown to see a museum, but then hang around and run around on the grass after the museum visit and maybe have a picnic. So, and then the museum visit would definitely be related to something that was learned in school. So it's calculated, the trips are purposeful, but it's a, another illustration of language learning in content. So context whereby if we're talking about something and maybe experimenting with something, then we also can go to the museum and see pictures of this something that we were talking about. So again, it's that really nice combination of fun and school, but that's at the middle school level. And if you're at the high school level, it's a fabulous program. And if you're at the elementary program, it's a sweet, fabulous program. All of the programs are um, catered specifically towards the goals of the school based on the child's age and development in both English and academic common core standards. And so we take the children um, where they should be in terms of that exposure to language content and real life activities and um, infuse it with a little bit of fun because it's the summer. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, and Debbie? Yeah, and for elementary, it is similar to the middle school program. We will be working on English language development, math skills, um, science projects, but there'll be also time for outdoor play, lunches served. So it'll be less, um, I would say just maybe less demanding than a typical school day, but there will be a lot of learning with focus on language development. And just to note for our elementary, this program for elementary is for our students who are new to, to learning English. So they're looking at levels one and two. They've only been learning English for a year or two. If your child is more advanced, they can participate in the regular summer school program with all the other you know, students that are just coming to DCPS for the summer. But this is a special program for students who are at beginning levels of English. So I just wanna make sure that that is clear. Excellent, thank you. Right, so we are um, getting ready to wrap up. Um, I will once again put the quick links in the chat. So if you open that, that has all the information that was, um, all the resources that were mentioned. And prior to that, I attached the flyers for the different, um, for the summer, uh, for the L summer academic program. Um, the one uh, link that I did not attach that I will attach right now is about the event hosted by our friends at LAD and the flyer is in English, I mean, in Spanish and in Amharic. So please feel free to pass that along to your um, contacts. All right, so to wrap up, I just wanna thank you all for being here. Thank you to the families who are present. Thank you to our presenters. This is very important information as our students head into the summer um, so they can continue their learning and their growth. If you would like to find more information about anything that we talked about today, like the recording of this session, you can find it in YouTube in our uh, Parent University uh, playlist. You can also find more information like the flyers and like the quick links that we will post in our social media. Um, and that is uh, in front of you. If you just go to uh, like Instagram, you just look up DCPS Family Engagement and there we are. Um, if you want to communicate with us to provide any feedback or if you have any follow up, uh, feel free to communicate with us through the social media platforms. I am the one who reads those messages, so we'll get back to you. But if social media is not your thing, um, I am entering a email address on the chat. Um, and you can email us there too. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I am very grateful that you guys are here um, listening and presenting. And I just want to wish you a good evening. Thank you.